as well because Sparky touched everyone. And let's bring Bernie Smilovitz in to start off our coverage here at 6. Bernie. Well, I, we've been talking about Sparky for two days and, yeah. you know, this is so sad, but it's also a celebration of a man who is just a, one of a kind, I think is the, simply the best way to put it. Find every positive adjective you can and they should all fit Sparky Anderson. He was as beloved a figure in this town as any and his kindness was what made you remember Sparky Anderson. Standing by live at his home here in Michigan is Tiger great Al Kaline joins us over the phone. He was as close to Sparky as anyone. Al, a sad day, but a day where you just remember what a terrific human being this guy was. Uh, there's no question about it. Uh, many of us were blessed to uh, have uh, Sparky as a friend, and you included, because I know you were a very good friend of Sparky's, and uh, uh, he's going to be missed. He, uh, he's, he's a guy that you don't run into very much uh, in, in your uh, travels in life, and uh, he, he was a special man. He said, absolutely, no question about it. Always had a smile, always made you feel better than when, when you had walked in the room before. I mean, he just made you feel good being in his presence. Well, you know, Sparky was the kind of a guy that he could be talking to the President of the United States or uh, one of our great fans that worked in a, a factory, and he would treat him the same. I mean, he was just one of those kind of guys. He, he knew where he came from. Uh, he, he loved what he did. He knew that he was blessed to be able to uh, be as successful as he, he was. And that uh, he was he was a, a guy that not only a great baseball manager, but he was a person that taught people how to uh, live uh, live their lives. Hey, he was such a character, Al, and I know you know stories about him and everything. But I've talked to players today who played for him and said, "Don't be fooled by that exterior. When he needed to be tough, he could be tough." Well, you know, I didn't have the pleasure of playing for him. I wish I could have, but uh, but I I had a lot of time to spend with him. Probably more time than than the players because we go to dinner a lot uh, when we were on the road and I was broadcasting with George Kell and uh, we would spend a lot of time together and, and I, I got to know the man more than, than just the baseball manager and, uh, and it, it was, I always remember what kind of person he was and what a great uh, uh, guy for the game of baseball. I mean, he, he, he was probably one of the best ambassadors. Uh, that baseball has ever had. Interesting. I talked to Jim Leland a short time ago, and he said the exact same thing, one of the great ambassadors for the game. And he understood baseball was just one thing. Life on the outside is really what made you as a human being. Right. That's what he tries to impress upon the, his players, and he loved his players. I mean, you could see when he, when we were up in Cooperstown, that's the last time I, w I was with him, when he walked in a room of Johnny Bench and Perez and Joe Morgan, the guys that, uh, that played under him for the Big Red Machine in Cincinnati. I mean, they were they, they couldn't get enough time with him. Everybody wanted to spend a little bit of time with Sparky and just sit down and talk to him. And he was he was failing quite a bit up there. And uh, but he he loved his players. And when you talk to him, uh, like I have had a chance to, and he talked about Alan Trammell and Lou Whitaker and Kirk Gibson and and so many of his players, Jack Morris. Uh, he, 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 just, he just bubbled over because he loved his players. He, he truly was one of those guys when they say they broke the mold when they made this guy. Sparky Anderson, they definitely broke that mold when they made him. Well, he was a unique individual, and, and I love to listen to him when he handled the media because <laughs> sometimes you say to yourself, now, what did he say? <laughs> but that's just the way he was. <laughs> he certainly was. He was one of a kind. Al, always a pleasure. Next time, hopefully, under better circumstances. Great to hear your voice, though. Al Kaline. Okay, Bernie, thank you. Thank you. There you go. Al Kaline, and uh, we're going to speak with Jim Leland coming up in yeah, sports. Great. Yeah. So I think we were talking earlier about it. It would have been nice to go on one of those walks, but with uh, Sparky and Ernie Harwell, how about being at a dinner with oh, Al Kaline? Man. There you Sparky go. Keep talking people, baseball. They say, oh, he or she's one in a million. He really was, yeah. Bernie. Oh, he yeah. really was. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, let's get back over to uh, Old Tiger Stadium where Roger Weber is standing by. And, uh, Roger, I guess the fans have already started showing up there. Yes, a few uh, of them have come by here, and they're feeling a lot of nostalgia. You know, in the, just the last couple of years, they've seen the final teardown of the stadium. They've seen the deaths of Mark Fidrich and Ernie Harwell and George Kell and, and now Sparky Anderson. Dale Thomas of Lincoln Park came here. Uh, he heard the sad news on the radio, went home and photocopied an autographed photo of Sparky that he was displaying at his home. He attached it to the old fence here with six red roses. Dale was here for every game, every home game of the 84 World Series, and he was a big fan of the skipper. Just always upbeat. Always had a kind word for everybody, uh, very much like Ernie Harwell. You know, it's just the, the irony of losing them both so close together. Uh, 
you know, now they're together again. How did you take this when you got the news today? Uh, I was upset, you know, for a couple hours, you know, I was driving for work and just, you know, it was so sudden, you know, from hearing yesterday that he's in hospice and today he's gone. Here's one of Sparky's quotes about fans. He said, I understand people who boo us. It's like going to a Broadway show. You pay for your tickets and expect to be entertained. When you're not, you have a right to complain. But I think you heard a lot more cheers than boos here at Old Tiger Stadium. Reporting live, I'm Roger Weber. Back to you. Oh, no doubt about oh, that. Yeah. yeah. Gosh. Uh, of course, Sparky not only touched lives on the field. Also remembered for his work with Catch, his charity, which of course extends uh, long after his, his passing. Yeah, and local force Katrina Hancock is live at Comerica Park tonight with that part of the story. He had his priorities straight, Katrina. Yes, he certainly did. And, uh, you know, I talked to two of his longtime friends today, and they shared with me a couple of stories about Sparky Anderson. I'm going to set this first one up for you. It's 1987. The Tigers are playing the Twins in the ALCS. Dan Ewald and Sparky go to the ballpark early, and then they're leaving, and this is what transpired. So we went out and grabbed this cab. Well, it's a playoff system, so I figured I'll pay for the cab, and I'll give them a good tip. We're in the playoffs. I was feeling really good. So the next day we go out and do the same thing, and we land the same cab driver, which was unbelievable. So we started talking about how the Tigers are going to maul Minnesota. We're just going to walk right over them, and we want the cab driver to hear that so he could turn around and say, oh, no, you're not, you know. Finally, I tapped the cab driver on the shoulder, and I said, hey, uh, take a look over here. Do you know who this guy is? Figuring he would recognize his face. He looked at him, he said, I don't know him, but I recognize you. You gave me a big tip yesterday. <laughs> and Sparky and I joked about that for years. Jim Hughes has known Sparky Anderson for 23 years, and one of his favorite memories is what Sparky said on opening day in 1991. And you could hear a pin drop. On opening day, 50,000 people, he said, there's nothing in this world that you will ever do that's better than helping a child. He says, I promise you this. He had that finger going. When you lay your head down at night, if you've helped a child during that day, you've done more than you will ever do in your lifetime. And even in his death, Sparky's charity catch will continue to help children. If you would like to share some of your memories, you can come down here and sign our card that we put outside Comerica Park and share your memories of Sparky Anderson. I'm downtown Katrina Hancock. Back to you. All right. Thanks, Katrina. And he not only had, of course, three children of his own, but he had nine grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And really, so many of these other kids who've been helped, over, I think they all uh, kind of look kind at of him. Kind of feel like he was like the he granddad. Was, yeah, exactly yeah. right. Yeah. And don't forget tonight, Local 4 will remember Sparky with a very special program. And we'll present a special salute to Sparky tonight, immediately following Local 4 News at 11. And then on Saturday, make plans to join us for a primetime special salute to Sparky. It's at 8 o'clock right here on Local 4. All right. Now, the other big story that has been breaking today. Prayers are going out for the Queen of Soul. Aretha Franklin has been ordered to cancel all of her concert dates and appearances for six months due to what her publicist says is a serious illness. Mara McDonald is live at Sinai Grace, and that is where Miss Franklin was admitted, Mara.